Because what I often find with solopreneurs is that we struggle with imposter syndrome. You know, you experience imposter syndrome and question whether you know enough and then you end up being in this rat race where you just prepare every single word of everything you're going to say and you just like leave no room for intuition and you just have every single second planned and I've been there. Welcome to the Empower and Evolve podcast, a space where we will explore topics ranging from mindset to career to business, energetics, spirituality, cyclical living, and beyond. I am your host, Kat Tannyberg. I am a mindset coach and integrative practitioner on a mission to help you take your life from meh to magical. Without further ado, let's plunge into today's episode. Hello, my love. Welcome to this episode of the Empower and Evolve podcast. I was literally just sitting here today being like, what am I going to record on today? Like, what is something I want to speak into to add value and to share a bit of me and have fun with? And the topic that landed was channeling. And I chose this topic because this last week, I literally had a huge realization that I have been channeling spirit or guidance, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And I'll talk into the different ways that you can channel and who you can channel. Um, but I had this realization that I have been channeling for way longer than I even knew what channeling was. <laughs> And I believe that this is a really, really powerful practice for any soulpreneur out there, any spiritual business owner, where you can just take a little bit of pressure off and allow yourself to surrender. I was literally on Instagram today and I saw someone posted how like they plan out every single lesson of their course to the detail and I just looked at that spreadsheet and I was like that's just like the worst idea to me (laughs) and I get it some people need it and I've also been the kind of person that has prepared every single work word and um I will share a little bit about my story when it comes to you know planning every single word versus trusting, surrendering, getting into my body, and also channeling. So this is going to be a really great episode for anyone who runs a business and has the goal of wanting to work smarter and not harder, wanting to spend less time behind the laptop, and instead really enjoy your life. First, I want to tell you about this realization. Well, okay, maybe I'll explain what channeling is. Channeling is this beautiful process of calling in either your higher self, any spirit guides you're working with, any ancestors, any specific energies that you're working with, like your inner wise woman, any of the goddesses, even just the universe. Like there's so many different entities that you can channel. And I, during the different times, have channeled different entities. For me now, I probably channel my higher self the most, my intuition, my wise woman. Um, I also like to work with Isis, who is one of the goddesses, but in the past, it was actually just channeling the universe. So channeling the universal wisdom through me. I completed my yoga teacher training back in 2017, and I was so excited to be teaching yoga, like so, so, so excited. And I wanted to, my yoga classes to be the best the best yoga classes and I'm sure you will be able to relate that when you put your work out there you want it to be the best 
So I planned out every single one of my classes to the T. And it took me over an hour to prepare a 60 minute yoga class. And back then, I was getting paid like sometimes $15 per class, which was like 60 minutes. And I had to be there like 20 minutes before class and then maybe 15 minutes after class. And then at the time, <laughs> I paid like $15 for three hours of my work. <laughs> way below, way below even like minimum wage. But I was doing it for a while because it helped me become more confident in teaching and it served a purpose. And then I started to get into personal development because it was also in 2017 when I joined Juice Plus, which is a network marketing company. And through that company, I started to learn about personal development. And one of my first teachers, who I still love dearly, is Gabrielle Bernstein. And I remember reading her book, The Universe Has Your Back. And I just had this idea drop in one day. I was like, what if instead of planning every single move of my yoga class, I would just call on the universe and allow it to guide me and work through me? And that felt so risky back then. Like I literally remember like being like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I did it anyway. So I remember coming to the yoga studio and it was the second yoga studio I was teaching. And so at that point, I think I was making $35 per class. Yay. <laughs> um, I remember getting to the class early and sitting at the front of the class, sitting in a meditation seat and closing my eyes, taking three deep breaths and saying to myself, universe, I invite you to take over the driver's seat. Work, use me as your vehicle, work through me, move with my body, speak with my words and deliver these yogis exactly what it is that they need for this class today. And I would sit with that intention and I would open my eyes And I would literally just let the class come through. And it was such a beautiful experience. And the feedback I got was incredible. Like people came up and being like, wow, that's the best class I've ever attended. I loved it so much. I experienced this and that. And I was like, oh my God, have I just uncovered something? And Getting that kind of confirmation was really beautiful because I was like, okay, this this was great. Like, this wasn't scary. I didn't fail. The feedback has been amazing. What if I start doing this all the time? And, you know, over the years, I have planned some classes, but ultimately, most of like 90% of my classes, I just show up and I just still to this day channel and just let the universe work through me. And I have full trust that I will deliver exactly what it is that my students need. And sometimes I'll ask my students like, oh, if there's any um, requests or anything, and then I'll channel through those requests. But that was, yeah, I had this realization because I've been working more with spirit. Um, My clairs have been coming more live over the last little bit who clairs that are most dominant for me is clear cognizance. So just having a really clear knowing, like I just know something without any logical explanation. And it just manifests as this sudden insight or the sudden idea or the sudden understanding that comes like beyond a normal thinking process. And the other one that I often experience is clear sentience, which is cl- clear feeling. And it's the ability to intuitively feel or sense emotions or energies or physical sensations that aren't directly observable. And it's like you have this emotional or energetic radar that picks up on the subtleties of an environment, person, or situation. So I personally have this, they they really combine for me. The way that it often shows up for me when I work with clients is I'll feel spirit. So the Claire, oh my God, I always... (laughs) I always get them mixed up. Claire, uh, blah, 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 blah. Claire sentience kicks in first. And then I just get this knowing of what I'm meant to say 
it's not that I, like I hear it, but it's just this knowing. So fl- first it's the clear sentience and then it's the clear cognizance. So I've been working more with spirit through that and just allowing myself to experience it. And, you know, I, ha- I have a really good um, boundaries around when spirits are allowed to connect, etc. cetera. And um, I've had some scary experiences in the past. So I wouldn't recommend like you, you listening to this podcast right now and being like, I'm going to start to work with spirit. Like, no, that's, um, that's not what I'm saying. But I have been working more with spirit in that sense. And it's been very profound. And I'm becoming more and more woo-woo. And really just, you know, channeling these different things and just trusting and delivering from a space of being in my body and just letting the words out instead of needing to prepare every single thing. But I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, oh my God. And I had this realization how I have been doing this for like over six years now. But I didn't even realize it back in 2018 that that's what I was doing. Like I had no freaking idea that I was channeling. Like I didn't know that that was what channeling was. I just had been playing around with surrendering to the universe and allowing myself to be this conduit of energy and like liberate, transformation was the word I was looking for. So it's been really cool to think about that. When I was still active with Juice Plus and when I was often leading trainings or even hosting our webinars, I literally prepared my parts word for word. And I learned how I could place my notes on my screen so that it would look like I was directly speaking to the screen word for word. It took me so long to prepare trainings, to prepare webinars. And then even when I started hosting courses and, you know, delivering content at first, I, I did this. I get, I planned out every single word that I was going to say instead of just trusting in my knowledge and delivering from a place of embodied wisdom and allowing whatever spirit form I was working with to work through me and deliver the content that resonates. So I did this for years. Even though in my yoga classes, I was really good at channeling. I had not been doing that in my business in other areas. And you know when this really hit me? It was when I was doing my speaker training in June this year, and even during speaker training, I literally wanted to have like a written thing written out that I could have in my like little like sneaky way that I like to read and was just going to deliver that. And I remember doing this exercise during speaker training, which was like, I can't even remember which one it was. There was something around like introducing ourselves and um, who we are and yeah. And I remember having a really hard time with that exercise, like to the extent where I was ready to give up, stop the training and walk away. (laughs) And I remember just having this fuck it moment where I then was like, fuck the script, fuck everything, fuck me even delivering this. And I'm just going to speak from my body, whatever that even means. So as it came to my time, I fully surrendered. I fully surrendered. And I spoke from my body. And the feedback I got was incredible. My teacher, who knows me quite well, said like it was the best she's ever heard me speak. (laughs) And I was like, oh. So it was kind of similar to that moment that I had after teaching the yoga class and getting the feedback being like, oh, I'm onto something here. And now I'm running my beautiful three-month program, um, Unleashed, which is all about liberating the wild woman and feminine embodiment. And I've really been taking this information into this course. I, like when I plan the weekly, um, weekly classes, I do create little, um, like a little slideshow for it and I put some notes on it, but they're only 
they're only some notes. And then I just allow myself to riff and channel whatever needs to come up. And one time I ended up going on this complete freaking tangent during one of the Unleashed calls. I had no idea where it came from. And I was just speaking. I was literally, I was channeling because I'll come back to this in a moment. And at the end, one of the girls was like, whoa, cat. Like, I think you're like, clear cognizance or something. Like, I just needed to hear exactly that. And it was nothing I had even planned to be talking about on that particular lesson. So with my Unleashed container, I channel my inner wise woman and sometimes I channel Isis to work through me and deliver what these women need. So I use different guides for different things. Um, Like I mentioned, like uh, sometimes I still use the universe when I teach yoga. I use Isis when I teach some feminine work um, or my inner wise woman. Sometimes I connect to my spirit guides. Um, like I know through having some very beautiful friends who are clairvoyant, so they can see spirits and they have like um, explained some of my spirit guides to me. Like one of, one of them is my granddad and sometimes I'll channel him if I feel I need the support. Um, yeah, so for me, it's it's really really whoever I'm working with at that given time. And that changes. And I'm really sharing this with you, with the intention for you to start to open yourself up to the possibility of trusting your intuition. Because channeling is kind of like trusting your intuition or trusting your intuition is kind of like channeling because you're surrendering and you're just letting yourself speak from where? From your higher self. So essentially, your intuition is channeling. Ta-da! <laughs> I also like to channel my higher self when I am creating courses, when I'm running my business, and I ask myself often the question like, what is the one thing I need to do today to move closer to my towards my goal? What is the one thing I need to do? And this is actually often something I teach my clients as well as um when they're working towards like a financial goal in their business. Like let's say um they want to make a thousand bucks this month. I'm like, okay. Every day when you sit down to work, ask yourself, what is one thing I can do today to make, to have a $1,000 week and then do that thing. And I was literally speaking to one of my clients today and she has been doing this activity. And for her, she said, one of the things that often came through is to actually go through a course that she has signed up for to get more clear on certain things. And I was like, that's great. And she's been taking action. We had a really great call today where we were able to map out the next steps in her business. And it's, it's been really great. Like I love teaching these simple things and sometimes I don't call it channeling and I just say like, yeah, connecting to your intuition. But let me, let me teach you a little bit about the process of channeling so that when you're listening to this podcast and you're like, whoa, this sounds really cool. This is something I want to start playing with. And you can start playing with it in like simple ways. You know, you don't have to do it like in a full course or a full-blown masterclass that you're doing could be something super simple like it could be like oh I just want to channel like a part of my masterclass or a part of this what I'm doing like whatever like however I'm just going to channel whatever comes up for this session with my client um however you want to use this it doesn't have to be big you can start small and just allow yourself to get the feedback and see whether it's working for you because there's a chance that it won't be working for you and that's okay because different things work for different people (laughs) ta-da So first, the, I find the biggest, biggest thing to consider when you start channeling is set an intention. Set an intention what you want to achieve with this channeling. So if I bring my earlier examples is um, the yoga class, I, my intention was to deliver a really great yoga class to my students. Um, if I bring the example of when I was at speaker training, my intention was to share my story in a really powerful way. If I bring the um, the example of my unleashed container, my intention is often to provide women with exactly what it is that they need in order to work towards their breakthrough, their transformation. And something that helps as well is to do a bit of grounding before you actually, you know, speak your intention out loud. 
Um, so you could take three deep breaths to really get into your body. And if it helps you, you can imagine roots growing down from your body into the earth and really connecting to the earth and channeling that energy um, or like opening your mind up, your crown chakra up to channel from the universe above and really just connect in that way. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to create a sacred space. Like when I channeled the whole format for the uh, for the Unleashed program, I created a sacred space for myself. It was outdoors, but I created a sacred space. I brought music. I brought my crystals. I did some smudging. And I just allowed myself to really connect in and allow myself to be the channel to come up with exactly what it is that I want to deliver during my program. And the other really, really big part of this is just allowing yourself to be in a receptive state. So really just allowing yourself to receive the things that drop in. And sometimes they don't make sense, but it's, it's really about learning to trust whatever drops in. And that, my darling, is how you channel. It's really, really simple. You know, sometimes I hear people say like, oh my God, like, what if I get it wrong? Just allow yourself to experience it. There's no failure. There's only feedback. The other thing is like concerns about safety. So this is where the intention is really, really important. And sometimes if you are afraid of, you know, connecting with some entities that don't want to come in, you can also set like really big boundaries around like, I am not calling anyone in. I am not open to receive any feedback right now. I'm simply allowing myself to be a channel. That is basically it. I just want to remind you that channeling is a skill that improves with practice and patience. Like the more you do it, the easier it will be. The more you'll trust it, the easier you'll find to drop into it. And yeah, if you love this episode, if you channel yourself, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a message on Instagram at it's Coach Kat. Tell me how you channel, who you channel, and what your experience has been so far. And also, if you do have some more um, questions around, you know, the concern of safety, shoot me a message, and I can tell you some more ways that I, you know, create some boundaries when I work with spirits. So it's more when I'm working with spirit rather than channeling. I've I've never personally had any negative experiences with whilst channeling but I'm happy to share with you some of the practices that I find help me with setting boundaries when working with spirit all right have a wonderful day love you bye thank you for tuning into the empower and evolve podcast it means so much to me that you've taken time out of your day to tune in if you're open to it And if you love the episode, I would love to invite you to take a couple of minutes to rate and review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. This will help me reach new audiences and share this message more broadly. And if this episode really struck a chord with you, I would like to invite you to share it on social media and tag me at It's Coach Cat so we can spread the love together. Until next time, I'll catch you there.